Well, at the end of last year, we started a study series uh, called Multiply to learn more of how we can be disciples who make disciples. And this is our theme. This is our emphasis for 2021 as a, as a local church. Our vision and our mission is to be devoted disciples of Jesus Christ who make disciples of Jesus and obey the Great Commission. At the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, he commanded and commissioned his disciples with these words, Matthew 28, 19. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. In Mark's Gospel, Mark 16, 15, Jesus said these words, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. These are the words of Jesus to his disciples. The first disciples had a huge mission to reach all people, to reach all nations, to reach the whole world with the good news of Jesus and to make disciples. Just think about the magnitude of that mission for a moment. Jesus was only speaking to 11 disciples, to just 11 followers, just 11 men, commanding and commissioning them to go and make disciples of all nations, to preach the good news to all the world. Wow, what a mission for just 11 disciples. Does that sound absolutely crazy? Does that sound just like a mission? It's completely impossible. Mission impossible. How could 11 men reach the whole world? How could this church that Jesus has started with just 11 chosen men go and make disciples of all nations? It's just, it's impossible. And yet here we are today in the United Kingdom, here in Cornwall, part of a local church because those 11 disciples obeyed and followed Jesus. And uh, when we think about this, the people in this world, there is approximately right now on this, this planet, 7.8 billion people. And of those 7.8 billion, approximately 2.4 billion are Christians who attend some kind of denomination or confess faith in Jesus Christ. That's over 30% of the world population, nearly one third of everybody uh, on this planet. So if you look at those stats, we can say God is moving. And actually, as we hear from overseas in, in the Middle East or in China or in Iran, many, many people are coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis. God is moving. God's kingdom is growing. His kingdom is expanding across this earth. And it started with those 11 disciples who obeyed and followed Jesus. But what about us here in Bodmin? Right now, there's more than 15,000 people living in this town. And that's probably more like 18,000 to 20,000 people with all the surrounding towns and villages around us in places where you live where you are uh, right now. And here in Bodmin, there are eight Christian churches. There's ourselves, New Life Church. There's Bodmin Community Church. There's Bodmin Christian Fellowship. There's a Light and Life Church. There's a Gateway Elian Church, the Methodist Church, the Anglican Church at St. Petrox, and you've got St. Mary's Catholic Church. And so of these eight churches, you've got five evangelical Pentecostal churches, two traditional churches, and one Catholic church. But how many then in our area are Christians? How many are actually followers of Jesus Christ? Well, I'd guess it could be 200, 250 uh, in our area of people who are connected to a local church who confess faith uh, in Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the statistics, that's only just over 1%, 1% in our local area who are part of the local church or followers of Jesus. And so just let that, let that sink in for a moment. I know I've shared these statistics with you before, but it's so easy for us to forget 
what's going on in our area and where we live. 99% of the people around us right now are not part of a local church and do not confess faith in Jesus Christ. So if the population, if we were going to put a number, if the population in this area was exactly 18,000, that means 17,800 people are outside of God's kingdom. That's 17,800 individual people that God has created, that God loves, who are on the wide road that leads to death and destruction, that leads to separation from God for eternity. And when you think of those statistics, does it, does it bother you anymore in any way? Does it move your heart with compassion to take action when you see that need, when you see the numbers that are lost around us. And imagine if Jesus Christ was here now in the flesh, if he came and walked upon this earth again in the flesh and he came to sit with you in your home where you are now and he spoke to you or he spoke to me, what would he say? Would he give us the same commands? Would he give us the same commission that he gave to his early disciples, his first disciples? Would he say, Go to you and to me, would he say, go and make disciples of all people, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you? Would he say to you and me, go into all of Bodmin, in all of the area where you live, and preach the good news to all the people? And what would you say? What would your response be to Jesus if he said those words to you personally? What would your response be? Well, there's four responses that we could have the first response we could have is to oppose and reject Jesus we could say that's just impossible there's nothing that I can do count me out I am not following you Jesus the second thing in response could be a number of excuses we could say I don't know where to start how could I possibly do that there's only a few of us and we're in lockdown I've got family commitments, I've got children, I've got a job to do, I'm in retirement and have excuse after excuse after excuse. I've got no time to do what you've asked me to do. So would you oppose Jesus? Would you come up with excuses? Or thirdly, would you ignore or delay your answer to Jesus? Would you say, okay, Jesus, yeah, I've heard your call, I've heard your command, but I'm not sure. It sounds so tough. I need more time to think about it. Or would your answer, number four, be accepting and say, yes, Lord Jesus, yes. I'm not sure how I can do this, but I am willing. I am willing to go and make disciples. I'm willing to learn, to grow, to follow you as you lead me, to, to allow you to teach me to, to know how to make disciples. So what would your response be? Would it be to oppose Jesus' command and commission? Would it be to come up with excuses? Would it be to ignore and delay your answer and response to his command? Or would it be to accept and say you're willing? Well, let me put it this way. If I ask you this, how should a devoted disciple respond to Jesus' comm commission? How should a devoted disciple respond? Should they reject Jesus? Should they have a number of excuses? Should they ignore Jesus or should they accept? And I'm sure we all know the answer. A devoted disciple would accept. And is that your response? Is that your response to the Great Commission, to the commands of Jesus for you and me to go and make disciples? So what did those 11 disciples do then? These first 11 that were chosen by Jesus when they were commanded and commissioned by Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, what did they do and what can we learn from them for us today? And to put this into context, these 11 disciples, the apostles, they were living in Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem at that time, there was probably 40 to 50,000 people, much bigger than Bodmin. And during the, the times of the festivals or celebrations of Passover and Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles, those numbers in Jerusalem would increase to over a hundred thousand people. 
Imagine living in Bodmin and seeing over 100,000 people coming. That's where you and I would be called to go and make disciples. So what did they do? What did these 11 disciples do right at the very start of their ministry after Jesus Christ had ascended to heaven? Well, today I just want to focus on Acts chapter 1. So if you have got Bibles and you just grab your Bibles, we're going to be looking at different verses from Acts chapter 1. And we're going to learn from that chapter three priorities that led to great spiritual breakthrough. Three priorities. So what were those three priorities of those 11 disciples? Number one, they prioritized prayer together. After Jesus had ascended to heaven, after he was taken up from the Mount of Olives back into heaven with his father, the 11 apostles who Jesus Christ had chosen returned to Jerusalem. You read in Acts 1 verse 14, these words, they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. In verse 15 of that chapter we read that this group of believers that gathered numbered about 120. Isn't that an amazing picture of 120 believers uniting together and it says and they all joined together constantly in prayer it's not just the 11 apostles but it was the women that were close to them this included jesus mother mary i'm sure it would have included mary magdalene it would have included mary who's the mother of james and john it also included jesus brothers or his step brothers those who were children of mary and joseph in matthew 13 we learned some of their names this was james and joseph and simon and judas It was an amazing family gathering of believers and they were all together, 120 of them all together. And it says they all joined together constantly in prayer. So that's the first thing they did. They prioritized prayer together. The second thing, the second thing that they prioritized was that they appointed a new leader. Sadly, after Jesus, uh, sorry, after Judas had betrayed Jesus, and taken his own life, there were now 11 apostles instead of the chosen 12. And so Peter, when he referred and read uh, scriptures in the, in the book of Psalms, he instructed the other disciples they needed to appoint uh, another uh, apostle to replace Judas in the leadership. You can read it in Acts 1 verse 20, 21. It says, Peter uh, said these words, it is written in the book of Psalms, may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord went in out and out among us. And then what did they do? They prayed together and they appointed Matthias. Matthias was the new 12th apostle. And you read that in Acts 1, 23 to 26. So the second thing is they appointed a new leader. And then thirdly, they obeyed Jesus Christ and they waited they waited to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit they obeyed Jesus and waited before Jesus had ascended up into heaven before he'd returned uh, to his father Jesus gave them this command in Acts 1 verse 4 do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about for john baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the holy spirit they'd been with jesus for 40 days after his resurrection and now just pause for a moment and imagine that imagine you were with jesus for those 40 days after his resurrection you'd seen him crucified tortured crucified killed on a cross dead buried and put in a tomb and then he's alive and he's spending 40 days with you teaching you instructing you imagine how you'd be feeling all the different emotions imagine the excitement of seeing jesus alive listening to his every word during that time and then after 40 days 
or at the end of that time he tells them to go and make disciples but he says before you do before you go and make disciples of all nations and proclaim the gospel he says wait wait in jerusalem wait for the gift that my father has promised that i've told you about wait for the baptism of the holy spirit because when he comes when he comes upon you you will receive power power to be my witnesses power to proclaim the gospel to all the world and so there's three principles we see here for the right foundation for a godly foundation and these i believe are ones that we need to prioritize as a local church we need to prioritize these three things we need to prioritize praying together to seek god and pray together as much as we can secondly we need to appoint leaders to continue to raise up new leaders to take on and share responsibilities in the family of god and then thirdly we need to obey and to follow jesus christ so that in all that we do we are obedient to him to receive and to live in the power of the holy spirit on a daily basis now note this when you look at acts chapter one who was praying together who was obeying Jesus and waiting to receive the Holy Spirit? Was it just the 11 disciples? Just the 11 apostles, the 11 leaders? No, it was all of those together with them, 120. The whole body of believers. And so here's the challenge, the challenge to you and to me as part of the family of New Life Church. Number one, will you will you prioritize praying together with others in 2021? Will you check your diary? Will you plan it? Will you prioritize it? There's so many things we can plan in our lives, but will you prioritize praying together with others? Maybe once a week, maybe a couple times a month, whatever works for you to connect with a friend or to connect with a prayer partner that I was sharing with you earlier to maybe give them a call or a video call or to meet up with them for a prayer walk. And what about other occasions in the month? Could you join us one Sunday night a month or maybe each week on a Sunday night for our prayer hour as we pray for our nation and pray for each other? Will you join us and pray and fast together once a month as we choose to set aside time as a local church and then join us on Zoom on that one evening? What would you plan and prioritize in your diary? Because if we are not, not intentional, if we are not committed, if we don't put those dates and plans in our diary, then it may not happen. So will you prioritize praying together with others? And secondly, secondly, will you obey and follow Jesus to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work in your life? to reign in your life this year ask yourself perhaps these questions what is god laying on your heart what is he laying on your heart the last few weeks as you spend time in his presence what's he been saying to you for this year have you been allowing time to listen to his voice speaking into your heart are you obeying let me just say that again, are you obeying the promptings of the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you? Are you obeying him? Is there a deep desire in your heart, in your life to grow, to grow spiritually as a disciple of Jesus this year, to be closer to God, to walk more closely with Jesus Christ day to day in your life? Is that a desire of your heart? Because if we are not intentional, if we don't make plans, if we don't write it down, then it may not happen. So the question is, will you choose, willingly choose to obey and follow Jesus intentionally this year to grow in your faith, to grow in your witness, to grow in your spiritual giftings, to take on responsibilities within the family of God? Are you willing? And what about us as a local church, as we think of us all collectively? Do we, as God's church, 
do we really want to see spiritual breakthrough? Is that something you want to see as a local church? And do we, you and I as a local church, do we really want to become devoted disciples who will go on to make disciples and impact Bodmin and impact our area? Is your answer yes? Hopefully your answer is yes to those questions. And if your answer is yes, then this is going to involve discipline. It's going to involve training. It's going to involve a commitment from you and I. It's going to involve devotion because we are in a spiritual fight. Will the kingdom of darkness back down and let us live our lives in freedom and we can win souls without any resistance? No way. Satan and the forces of evil are relentless to kill, steal and destroy your life, the lives of those around us and to hinder our spiritual growth. The forces of darkness and Satan are using every tactic and every method possible to stop us from growing, from stop us from moving forward, from stopping us from taking ground for the kingdom of God. And that's why we need to stand together as a team if we're going to see spiritual breakthrough. Together, you and I as God's people, we are fighting the good fight of the faith. As Paul wrote to young Timothy as a charge in 1 Timothy 6, 12. It def it's definitely not a fight for the Lone Ranger. It's definitely not a fight that's to be fought on our own. You and I are part of the church. God, God Almighty, he created the church. He initiated the church through his son, Jesus Christ. And he anointed the church by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Francis Chan, who wrote the book Multiplier we've been looking at recently, he wrote this. He said, the church is not a social club. The church is not a building. The church is not an option. The church is life and death. The church is the strategy for reaching the world. What we do inside the church, you and I, really matters. And let me just add this. The church is you and me in Christ. When we come to him, we are in Christ and we become the church. The church is the dwelling place of the living God. The church, you and I, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are all part of one body in one spirit with one head. Jesus Christ, he is the head of the body, the church of Christ. And every single one of us, every single one of you, including me, every single one of us have a unique place in the body of Christ. We all, every single one of us has a part to play in the good fight, in the mission to go and make disciples. For those of you on with us last Wednesday, Francis Chan wrote this uh, in his book, Multiply. He said, the mission of your church is too important to leave to everyone else. The moment you begin to believe that your church can be healthy while you sit on the sidelines, you have given up on God's plan of redemption. God placed you in your unique situation because he wants you to minister to and with other Christians he has placed around you. Paul's vision for the church included every Christian. In Ephesians 4, 15 and 16, it says this, we, who's that we? We is all of us as God's church. We are to grow up in every way in him who is the head into Jesus Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And then Francis Chan goes on to say this, the goal of the church is to grow up in every way into the likeness of Jesus Christ. But the church will never reach this goal unless each part is working 
properly. Each part is, is doing its work, is doing its work. This doesn't mean that we all function exactly the same way, but it does mean that we all have responsibility. It also means that if you are not active in the church, you are hurting your brothers and sisters. One paralyzed leg forces the rest of the body to work twice as hard to make up for that leg's inactivity. God made you to be exactly who you are and his spirit has empowered you with unique spiritual abilities or gifts. Together, we function as one body. Until you and every person in your church are actively ministering to the people around you, your area, like Bodmin, will not have an accurate picture of what the church was created to be. Some strong words. So let me ask you this. Do you realise the importance of the church today? Do you realise how important the church is? There is no plan B to reach the lost. God has a plan A and there is only a plan A and we are the plan A. The plan A to proclaim the gospel, to reach the lost and to go and make disciples. So let me ask you that question again. Do you want to see spiritual breakthrough? Do you want to see spiritual breakthrough in this church? Do you want to see spiritual breakthrough in your life? Do you want to see spiritual breakthrough in Bodmin and in the areas where we live? If so, then it's going to involve all of us to fight the good fight of the faith. And how? By all of us, every single one of us, every single one of you, prioritising prayer together with others in the body as much as you can. Secondly, having a servant heart to take on responsibilities within the local church, to learn and grow in your spiritual gifts of how you can serve one another and help the local body reach out to others. And thirdly, by you and I choosing to obey and to follow Jesus Christ, whatever the cost, to take up our cross daily, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said this, this is in Luke 9, 23. He said this, whoever wants to be my disciple, do you want to be one of my disciples? He's saying this to you, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. So do you want to follow Jesus this year? Do you want to follow him? Will you deny yourself? And take up your cross daily to follow Jesus, to follow the head of the church, to follow the head of the body. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we choose not to follow the desires of our own hearts, but we're choosing to pursue God's heart, the desires of God's heart. Is that what you choose? Is that what you choose in your life? Let me just ask a few questions as I just come into a close to think about the desires in your heart. Just take a moment now to examine the desires in your heart right now. Do you want to experience God's God's power, freedom and the boldness to be a witness of the good news of Jesus Christ to others around you on your front line? Do you want to see loved ones in your family saved? Do you want to see work colleagues, neighbours, friends, those around you turn into Jesus Christ for salvation? Do you want to see Bodmin or your town or your community where you live impacted with the good news of Jesus Christ? Then the question is this, are you willing to pray together as much as you can? with others in 2021 will you learn to pray we can all be at different stages of learning what it means to pray with others are you willing to learn to pray with others are you willing to grow in your prayer life are you willing to prioritize praying with others in the body in the body whether it's just one here or one there or maybe a, a few here or in one of the smaller groups or one of the prayer meetings 
Because when we look through the book of Acts, when we read through the book, we see the disciples prioritised prayer. They were devoted to praying together. And what were the results? And we're going to look a bit more in the coming weeks at, at the book of Acts. The results were amazing. They saw fruit, salvations, and the growth was absolutely phenomenal. In Acts chapter 1, verse 15, those 11 apostles gathered with 120 believers. There was 120 of them. You get to Acts 2, 41, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and 3,000 were saved. You jump to Acts chapter 4, verse 4. This number grew to 5,000 men. There were over 5,000 believers as part of a local church. In Acts 2, 47, it says the Lord added to their number daily those who have been saved. They were connected to the head. They were connected to each other and they saw supernatural growth and multiplication in the body of Christ. And it's not only the same throughout Acts, it's the same throughout history from the time of Jesus right up until now. When God's people pray together, there are great signs, miracles and wonders that begin to play to take place in people's lives. A healthy church body flourishes and grows and impacts the world when the body is healthy. And so is this your desire? Is this your desire to see a healthy, active, spirit-filled body of believers that bring revival, transformation and salvation to those in your home, to those in your workplace or on your street or in your town? Or have you settled for the status quo? Just stop and think for a moment about what I'm asking you and be honest with yourself. Are you satisfied with the way things are? Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with the way things are in the local church that we're a part of or across Bodmin? Are you satisfied with what you see in the, in the local church up and down the United Kingdom? Where it has in many ways such little influence within our society and there are hundreds and thousands all around us who are lost and destined for hell. Does it break your heart? Does it really break your heart? Or do you push it aside and just try not to think about it? As I was praying this week, I just felt the Lord really saying to me, Steve, I just want you to speak what's on my heart. And I felt that what I'm bringing to you might seem quite strong, but we need to, I just, yeah, it just felt that I needed to stir your hearts this morning, to stir your hearts to stir a reaction because right now God's heart breaks for the lost. Every single one around us who is lost and far from God matters to God. He loves them and his heart breaks for them. If you are online with me now and you are a follower of Jesus, you said yes to Jesus, then right now you are one of the 99. You're one of the, the flock in, in the sheepfold. You're safe in God's arms. You're protected from those savage wolves. You receive God's love. You are destined for a great and awesome and blessed future in the glories of heaven forever and ever. How amazing our future will be. Well, but what about the one who is lost? What about the one in your family? What about the one in your workplace? What about the one down your street where you live? Will you search for them? Will you pray for them? Will you help them and witness to them and lead them to the good shepherd, Jesus Christ? Well, if your heart breaks, as mine's been breaking this week for the lost, as God has been just moving in my heart to stir my heart, to respond to his call, to respond to the great commission that he has placed upon me, I know I've got my part to play and I'm willing. What about you? Jesus is commanded and commissioning you to go and make disciples. Are you willing? Maybe you don't know how. Well, that's what we want to do this year is we want to learn together. How can we be moving in the power of God's spirit to be the witnesses he's called us to be? And that's why we need to pray. And that's what I want to do right now as I finish. 
if you want to respond saying Jesus I may be a bit scared I don't really know how then that's a good place to be because that brings us to our knees it brings us to a place where we say God help God I need your help it also brings us to a place where we reach out our hands and say God come by your spirit upon me give me the power to be the witness you want me to be and so if you want to respond if you're able and comfortable at home and got space maybe you want to kneel with me and just to kneel before God or maybe where you are just to lift your hands in surrender and I just want to pray for us I want to pray that God will move among us and so if you just bow your heads with me if where you are if you want to kneel if you want to lift your hands to engage in what God wants to do in your life today. Just hold out your hands. Yeah, Father, you see us. You see us in our weakness. But right now we, we just come to you and we plead with you to help us. We know if you are calling us to go and to make disciples, to proclaim the gospel to all people, we know it is, it is an mission impossible. It's a mission that we cannot do without you. And so right now we surrender. We deny ourselves. And we choose you, Jesus. We choose to follow you. We choose to listen to you. We choose willingly to say, Lord, we want to go in your ways. And so I pray, come Holy Spirit. Come upon us. Come upon us in power. Just as you came upon the early church to give them the power to be your witnesses. We know it's the same today in the battle we face. We need more of your spirit, more of your power in our lives. And so we surrender to you. We surrender to you. Come Holy Spirit. Convict our hearts where there is lukewarmness, where there's complacency, where there's a divided heart where there's selfish pursuits, worldly pleasures that we run after. Father, we pray you would remove them from us. Give us an undivided heart. Put a new spirit in me today. Remove my heart of stone and give me a heart that desires to love you more and to obey you and follow you in all that I do. Renew my devotion to you, Jesus. Fill me afresh with a fire from on high. Burn out the rubbish. Burn a fire of passion for your name, Jesus. Fill me again, fill me again, I pray. Refine me and burn in me, I pray. I ask this now, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Just have a moment as you respond in your own heart. What do you want to say to Jesus? This isn't about me. This is about your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is calling you. He is calling you and commissioning you to go and make disciples. What is your response? Just pray in your heart to him now while you're on your knees or while your hands are raised. And say what you want to say to your Lord, to your master. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Just changing my screens on here a moment, but just before we move on, I'm going to ask Matthew to, to close. For some of you now, you've been listening, and for some of you, maybe your, your hearts are just burning, or maybe you just feel you're not feeling anything. But when we choose to follow Jesus, he equips us. When we say yes to him, he is the one who provides to us everything we need. And so I feel just before we move on, the closing song is... Just to, I'm just going to pray for a moment in, in, in tongues and uh, maybe just to pray in the spirit. And if you feel happy to do so at home, then feel free to do so. But just allowing God's spirit to speak. There's things I believe God wants to say now that I don't know what they may be. But I know that when God's spirit moves upon me and when he moves upon you, you will begin to do things you never thought you could ever do. 
to praying with others. For some of you perhaps haven't ever prayed in a group before. That could be the first step this year where God breaks those fears and you begin to pray with others, with just one other or in a smaller group. For some of you might not have ever witnessed and shared your testimony with someone else. Maybe this year as God's spirit rests upon you, he opens doors and you have opportunities to witness to others. There's so many little steps that it could be. For some of you, it might be standing in the street and witnessing to someone uh, this year. But for some of you, that might not be the next step. It might just be talking to someone in your family about Jesus Christ. But whatever those little steps are, whether they're big steps or little steps, we need the Holy Spirit. We need his spirit if we are going to be fulfilling and obeying the Great Commission. So I'm just going to pray for a few moments and feel free to pray in the spirit yourself. Or even in your own words, just to call out upon the Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Yeah, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Just come now, I pray, upon each and every one of my brothers and sisters, right where they are in their homes, as they sit there now in your presence, I pray your spirit will just come upon them. Fill their hearts with your love. Fill their hearts with a passion for your name and move their hearts and even break their hearts to what breaks your heart. We know that your heart is for the lost. Your heart is for that one who has gone afar from you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Burn something deep in our hearts with a desire to gather and meet with our brothers and sisters, but also to move in our hearts to witness to those around us on our front lines. And we know if we're going to be effective, if we're going to be fruitful, we need you. We need your spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Do something amazing and powerful in our hearts. Lord, we can't change ourselves, but as we willingly lay before your feet, you are the one who can change us from the inside out. When you said to your disciples, come follow me, he said, I will make you fishers of men. You transformed them and, and trained them to become fishers of men. We might not be there yet, but we know that when we commit to you, when we surrender to you, you will make us fishers of men, fishers of women, fishers of children. Lord, do a deep work in our hearts this year. Take us on a journey together as one body, in one spirit, following the one head, Jesus Christ. We commit ourselves to you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we know we need you more and more. Even more so in this hour we live, in these days we live, we need you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Yeah, we surrender all to you, Jesus.